Hello, this is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thanks for tuning in. Today we have the second half of Gangbusters from 1942. Now in this, watch for Robert Armstrong. Robert was in 1933's King Kong, Son of Kong, and also in Mighty Joe Young. Well, in Gangbusters, there's no monkeying around. He plays a detective, Tim Nolan, out to get the man who murdered his brother. So here we go with the second half of Gangbusters. This threat of Professor Mortis is a lot of nonsense. Absolute nonsense. I hope so, Your Honor. You hope so? Why, the man must be crazy. How does he expect to get inside the building to blow it up with all the police you have on guard there? You know the dynamite can be exploded at long range by a remote control, don't you? Certainly I know it. Why? Well, you can bet that if we know it can be done, that crazy scientist knows how to do it. Where's Vicky? We're inside getting pictures. Inside? Is she crazy? Three minutes. What's the letter going there for? I rather hope Bannister will be in the building. He's becoming somewhat annoying. minute or two until eight. Vicky! Here I am, Bill, up here. Come on down, Arthur, oh, you little sap. It's nearly eight. Is it? My watch must be slow. Come on down, do you hear me? Okay, in a couple of minutes. Eight o'clock. Please get out of here. Come on. Mortis wasn't kidding. That was out front. Good thing it was. Come on. Here, just keep your hands from burning. Now use your feet as brakes. Get going. were in there, they didn't have a chance. Perhaps now the police will realize the type of mind they're dealing with. Are you hurt, Vicky? No, I'm all right. Let's rush these pictures through. Come on. I gave you up, Bill. Stop the car. We can see if the other boys have taken care of the bank. Oh, it's a cinch. All the cops in town are right here. That, Mr. Tavoni, was the general idea. Those explosions were planted time bombs, or else they were set off from some other place. There was no one else in the building. The nerve of that guy mortis. He'll try anything. Stop in that alley leading behind the bank. Everything worked out. Only one hit. And that was? One of the watchmen played ball, the other one had to be handled. Oh, I see. Uh, Wilkinson and Henry, that's the watchman we paid off of, and loading the money in the other car. And when Henry has served his purpose... Right. Seventh Division cars, emergency alarm from the United Mortgage Building. Repeat, attention, all Seventh Division cars, emergency alarm from the United Mortgage Building. Well, that's just a few blocks from here, United Mortgage. That's the bank. Let's go. Maybe blowing up the new city hall was a gag. Yeah, to draw our attention so the mob could do a job somewhere else. See, we got to get out of here. That watchman you thought you took care of just turned in an alarm. We can't risk taking the money to headquarters now. Wilkinson, you and the watchman take it to Francis. We'll transfer it when it's safer. 
Bellagio, you, you stand by with a car to ward off pursuit. Take the Borney with you. He's too conspicuous to suit me. What are you doing? Get out. Wait a minute. What did the professor mean when he said I was conspicuous? Was that a crack? Come on. You... Take care of things here. We're going after the car that just left. There's another police car coming towards us. It's the one behind us I'm interested in. places in this neighborhood, and all of them good. Right. No use wasting time around here. Let's get back to the bank. What'd you find? One vault open and emptied, one watchman dead, the other missing. You sure there were two watchmen? Yes, I know the missing one. Queer duck by the name of Henry. Here's something else. A witness saw this car leave the other end of the alley in a hurry. That's a break. The whole license number. Send out a general right away. Yes, sir. Looks like we chased the wrong car. Are we going in the bank? There's nothing in there but routine work. We want to get that gun bandaged back to the laboratory. No, no, I will not have it. You cannot use my place for a hideout for stolen goods. Sure we can, Frenchie. Now, wait till I tell you what we have. No, no, the police suspect me now. They may search my place at any time. Wait here, Henry, while I see if everything is clear. Somebody might come, and I'd have to run for it. You're not going to run anywhere. Not with all that dough. That'll be Wilkinson. It better be. Everything straight? Somebody ought to be out there with Henry. It's a lot of dough. A lot of dough? For money? Yeah. You know, the stuff they used to keep in the vaults down at the United Mortgage. Oh, in that case, I think it could be arranged. No, no, you're cold on it now, Frenchie. We'll find another hideout. No, 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 I did not know it was so important. It's important. It's the biggest haul ever made in this town. Oh, well, come, I think we are wasting valuable time. The night air she is so bad for perishable goods. Come, there's a garage in the back where I keep my wines. Let's see the garage. This gun of the same caliber as the one used by Deboni. We'll soon find out if this is it. This garage hideout isn't so hot that it'll have to do. And you stay away from those wine barrels. Okay, okay. But you left Henry in there with him, didn't you? So what? These bullets definitely match. 
there. Fired from the gun that killed your brother. And Boney was on that job tonight. Oh, uh, how about taking in your film for the five star? Good idea. We all know that some of the gang have had their faces altered by plastic surgery. From the looks of this bandage, wouldn't you say it had been on a man's head and face? Mm, it probably was, yes. And it could have been used by a man recovering from a job of plastic surgery. You mean Taboni has had his face altered? It's very possible. And not a bad idea. Of course, it makes it tougher for you. Yeah. You better ditch the car, just in case. What about Henry? Bring him in here for a while. That is all, Mr. Grubb. Thank you. Yes, sir. place in that garage. What is the matter with it? It is solid concrete and securely locked. To me, it sticks out like a sore thumb. That's the first place I'd search. Perhaps I have a better hiding place. Now that we are partners, I will show you. Come. See? How firm, how sound. All right, so what? Observe. time ago, a bootlegger owned this place. He received his goods this way. That down there is the river. It's a swell spot, but not for our stuff. Sure, it's too wet. Besides, it might drift away. You could tie the bags so and lower them by ropes. Well, it won't do for the money, but let's see that key. Plain ordinary key. Yes, but what she unlocked is not ordinary, yes? I wonder if Wilkinson's back with Henry yet. Oh, yeah. You got him to worry about now. Silent, clean, efficient. Yeah. But we must lock in. It is not safe. I've changed my mind. We're going to use it after all. Oh, you give me my key. I do not know what you intend to do, but I will not have it. I cannot afford this trouble with the police. They will close me up. If your gadget's all it should be, they'll never know. Please, no, you cannot do this. Why do you do it to me? Maybe to keep you from talking about that dough, Frenchie. There's Henry now. Henry wanted to warm his feet. Oh, why, sure. Give him anything he wants. Come on, Frenchie, you join the party, too. Another thing. Get that, will you, Bill? Police lab. This is Bannister talking. Okay, we'll be right over. Come on, Tim, they want us back to the bank for a checkup. I better get back to my dear old paper. Come on, Henry, I'll show you to your room. Let me have another one. I'm cold. All right. You're not heading for the bank. I know it. That call came from the Harbor Division. They found the car we want dumped in the river. Yeah? What does the waterfront suggest to you, Tim? Frenchies. Right. That's enough. Just one more. All right. We'll take the bottle with us. Come on. Come on, we'll go upstairs. This way. Holy Jesus! 
Chapter 8 of Gangbusters at this theater next week. when you thought you took care of just turned in an alarm. We can't risk taking the money to headquarters now. Wilkinson, you and the watchman take it to Francis. We'll transfer it when it's safer. speaking. Oh, it's you, Mayor Hanson. Yes, I've heard about the bank robbery. We are on the job. Listen, Bill Bannister found out where they took the loot and he's on his way down to recover it. It's at a waterfront dive known as Frenchy the Ducks. Escape, most likely. Fire escape. I'll be there when I come down. You think it's safe to leave that door in Frenchy's garage? No, he's liable to tip off the cops to square himself. Well, grab it for yourself. to Monsieur Bannister. Come on, get me out of here. Close the Robertson. Have patience. We will jump you out quick like a Jack Rabbit. My friend. There you are. Now 
you will rest yourself. I will fix that trap before she catches somebody else. Now. I got the license number. Uh, then I mean a thing. They'll change place the first chance I get. Today I will get nails and a stick and fix that hole forever. It's dangerous the way it is. Are you kidding? But no, mademoiselle. What you build it for? I didn't build it. A long time ago, a bootlegger owned this place. He used that hole to hide his liquor. Well, that's as good a story as any. What about the others? They left by the fire escape. Tim's after them. Well, let's get out of here. Company watchman. Gotta get a doctor. It's no use. They double crossed me. Serves me right. But it won't do them any good. You better not talk, fellow. The money they stole is. Frenchie knows where. All right, Frenchie. Where's the money? I really do not know, my friend. You want to talk here? Go to headquarters. Oh, you did not let me finish. I myself, I do not know. I only know they say something about a garage in back from my place. We'll let it go at that for the time being. For the very first time, I think Frenchy Ludoc is a big fool. I have made enemies of the League of Murdered Men. The police, they suspect me. Bannister's dead. Dead? That's not better. I had other plans for him. How about the watchman? Oh, he ain't never going to tell nothing no more, boss. I mean, Professor. And the money's hidden where we can pick it up any time we want it. It won't take many more such raids to convince the voters they need a new city government. except for three things. Bannister is not dead. The watchman did talk, and the police have already recovered the money you hid last night. There must be some mistake, Professor. There were several mistakes, and you men made all of them. We strike quickly to regain our lost ground. Hmm. This seems adequate. Syndicated Steel Corporation's payroll. You'd better pick up McKay as we arranged some time ago, Mr. Bernard. Right. Then come back for these three. I'll explain to them while you're gone. Is it all right for me to go now? Not yet, Mr. Clark. Bannister's becoming too efficient. I think we'd better get rid of him. That's what we've been trying to do. I'm not interested in attempts, Mr. Taboni. This time, I shall get results. Watch the vase on that table. There are four more shells inside. Now, Mr. Grubb, this is what I want you to do. Take this camera. 
You follow these instructions closely. I want you to take this camera down to... Get me the mayor's office. Chief O'Brien speaking. Is the mayor in? Hello, Mayor Hanson. You read the papers? What do you think of your gangbusters now? What have they done that's so remarkable? Why did they let them steal the money in the first place? The gang is as far as ever from being broken up. Bannister, that's all I ever hear. If I had followed my judgment, I'd ordered Bannister off the job. You do, and you can have my resignation at the same time. Give me police lab. Is Bannister there? What did you dig up on that mob car that was wrecked? What do you mean, nothing much? Well, no real clues. Just a scrap of greasy paper we picked up inside one of the doors. Don't expect much from it. Well, he is. Well, I'll resign from the case if you want me to. Okay, Chief. Ready now, Bill. If there was ever anything on that piece of paper, it's certainly gone now. Well, if there ever was anything on that paper, young lady, infrared rays will bring it out again. Lab, journal calling Miss Logan. Uh, yes. City desk calling you, Miss Logan. Hello, Logan speaking. A new picture of Bannister. What for? You've got a hundred of them down there. What makes your voice sound so funny? Oh, well, you better take something for it. Okay. That's a sales slip from a driving stand, isn't it? Yeah, nothing much to work on, but we'll take a whirl at it anyway. Hold it, Bill. The boss wants a nice big close-up of you detecting something. Oh, not now, Vicky. I got a job to do. Swell. Well, I'll tag along and get one in action. Keep the change. Thank you. that won't be interested when we lift the company payroll. Get into your work clothes, McCain. Let's get this truck out of here. Order, please? We're not eating. We're from police headquarters. Don't policemen eat? Not often when they're on duty. Mm -hmm. You worked your long miss? About a year. Why? Remember serving any of these men? Well, this fellow was in here not ten minutes ago. Sola Bernard. Which way to go? Down the highway. You're the police, aren't you? Yes, why? I just found a dead man down the road. Didn't run? No, this man had been shot. Hold it, everyone! Get in, Vicky, if you're coming with us.
Nothing happened to identify him. Turn this way and hold it. Don't do it, Vicky. I'll smash your camera. I don't want any pictures of this for reasons of my own. P-A-R-O. Mean anything to you, Tim? Not a thing. P-A-R-O. The cuffs of his pants are filled with steel filings, and the sole of his right shoe is worn like a truck driver's. That doesn't help much. Tracks show two cars pulled in here. Looks like a light car forced a heavy truck off the highway. Yeah, but where are they now? Did you pass a truck a few miles up the highway? Yeah, three or four of them. Gravel truck, syndicated steel delivery. Syndicated steel, that sounds like it. This fellow must have been the driver. I bet the kid at the log cabin could tell you. We'll go back and find out. This is more than a truck theft. Stand by until you're relieved. Stop and investigate all syndicated steel trucks northeast of city. Driver murdered, car is stolen. Repeat. Investigate all syndicated steel trucks northeast of city. That's all. Sure, I knew him. He was a tall, good-looking fellow. He tried to date me up for tonight because it was payday at the mills. Payday? That's what he must have been trying to write, that they were after the payroll. He wouldn't be having the payroll in the truck, would he? No, oh, they hang on him at car service. Wait till they phone headquarters. Now do your stuff. Payroll's on its way to the steel mill by armored car. I tried to stop it at Hilldale, but it had already gone through. I don't see how anybody can hold up an armored car. I don't either. But we'll follow it and find out. This ain't a stick up. I think my steer knuckle broke. Oh, hello, Burns. Hi, McKay. I didn't know you were back driving for syndicated. I'm just filling in for one of the boys that's pretty sick. Oh. It's okay, Slim. I know him. All right, you two. Drop them good. Get in and drive the pay car. McKay, you take the truck. Load these guards in the back. Come on, move. car between here and the steel mills? No, I didn't. That's funny. We knew we were behind it. Any crossroads up ahead? None that I know of this side of the steel mill. Okay, thanks. Seems funny that a truck and an armored car could just disappear. Well, there's a lot of places I could turn off here in the brush. Yeah, but how could a truck make an armored car do it? Better pull up, Tim. When the collision not long ago. How can you tell? Otherwise, this would be flattened. Looks like the tracks aren't clear over to that fence. Go ahead, Tim. Hold it, Tim.
Something phony here. Tracks go around under that board fence. Oh, Bill, look this way. See Gang Bait, Chapter 9 of Gangbusters at this theater next week. on his way to the steel mill by armored car. I tried to stop it at Hilldale, but it had already gone through. Come out of there with your hands up. Wait a minute, fellas. This ain't a stick up. I think my steer knuckle broke. All right, you two, drop them guns. Grab them, I said. Bernard. Get in and drive the pay car. McKay, you take the truck. Load these guards in the back. Come on, move! Seems funny that a truck and an armored car could just disappear. Well, there's a lot of places they could turn off here in the brush. See this, Doc? Looks to me like this guy Bannister is going to give you a lot of trouble. Not if that newspaper girl takes a picture of him with the camera we gave her. In close range, she can hardly avoid killing him. But how could a truck make an armored car do it? Better pull up, Tim. collision all right not long ago how can you tell otherwise this would be flattened looks like the tracks run clear over to that fence go ahead Tim hold it Tim Phony here. Tracks go around under that board fence. Oh, Bill, look this way. Bill! Bill, you all right? I guess so. Did you hear that? Sounded like a backfire up on the road. Sounded like a shot to me. So what have you got in that camera? I don't know. All I know is I snapped your picture and it went off like a gun. It is a gun, and you almost parted my hair with it. Was it yours? No, that's not my camera. Mine had my initials right here. Somebody switched cameras on you. Yeah, somebody. I guess I know a backfire when I hear one. And I know a gun when I hear it, too. I've been shot at it enough times. All right, all right. I'll go check on it if it'll make you feel better. Keep an eye on those guards. Well, put it back in the car and don't shoot any more pictures. That armored truck must have driven through here. Yeah, no doubt of it. Let's take a look. It's a great spot to hide an armored car. You said it.
thing we waited. We'd have moved in on the whole gang. Cars now heading west on Highway 18. probably doing. Mac, when you come to the next curve, turn around and head back fast. Squad cars get here, let them take care of you. Oh, Tim. Yeah? Don't tell anyone we've recovered the money. Vicky knows. She won't when I get through. Send her back to town in one of the other cars. What are you up to? A lot of things. I'm afraid this is just a waste of time. Why? Well, any crook smart enough to rig up a thing like that is too smart to leave any fingerprints on it. Well, there's plenty of smudges. I'll see how they come out. Bill! Hey, point I think the other way. No, this is mine. Some cop found it in a telephone booth downstairs. Downstairs? That's funny. Yes, very. Vicki, someone we trust around here is double-crossing us. You're right, Bannister, no prints. That's that. Maybe there's some on the camera. Oh, it wouldn't mean a thing. Everyone's handled it. Police lab. Richard speaking. Chief wants to see you in the office right away. I've been expecting that. Well, Bill. Have you found out yet how the gang got away with the money? Not yet. Hiya, Chief. That plan of yours has gotten us into a fine mess. When I told the mayor the payroll had been grabbed, he went through the roof. He did? Good. Good nothing. He gave me my choice of firing you or resigning. So I resigned. Not on my account. Why don't you let me tell Hanson that I have the money in my wall safe? Because I don't want anyone to know that but us, not even the mayor. But your job. It's not as important as busting this gang. But you're off the force. I know. But there's nothing to prevent a private citizen from trying to run this gang down, is there? No. There's nothing to keep the police from helping, if we feel like it. Of course. 
Now, we know that someone we trust is tipping off the gang to our plans. Seems so. At least they always know them in advance. That's right. Now, you carry out your part in our plan, and I'll put the finger on the spy Professor Morris has put here at headquarters. Hey, Bill. How'd this story get in the paper? Didn't we get the money from the pay car? Sure, it's in the chief's wall safe. Then what's the idea? Look, Tim, we know Professor Morris has got a spy among us. Well, it looks like it. He always knows what we're going to do before we do it. We're going to use that money to catch the spy. I don't get it. We're going to tell everyone I've got it. But we're going to tell each and every one is hidden in a different place. Oh, I see. Then when the gang comes to get the doll, we know who tipped them off. That's it. Let's go. It's a dirty shame, Bill. You're making a big mistake. You were doing all right. I got a mind to quit, too. I'm resigning. Forget it. O'Brien needs you. That's a fine thing, firing you. Just when you're all set for the big blow-off. What do you mean, blow-off? Talk, Bill. I'll talk, but not now. How about a cup of java, Vicky? Sure. I've had a direct tip that the gang didn't get the money. I don't understand. You've got nothing on me there. But if the gang didn't and we didn't, then who did? Doesn't that put it up the banister? I've heard rumors that Bannister and Frenchy the Duck are pretty close. The money's in my apartment. I was going to use it to trap the gang, but mum's the word. Let them worry about it for a while. If you won't tell a soul, I got the money in my cellar. Now listen, keep it under your hat. But the money from the armored car has been located at... According to the papers, we have the payroll money. According to you, gentlemen, the police have recovered it. Now, what did happen? Now, what could happen while Wilkinson and I were chasing people through the brush who weren't there? You mean you think Tavoni and I grabbed the money? Gentlemen, please. I'm sure Mr. Bernard wouldn't do such a thing. Besides, he had no opportunity. There's another possibility you gentlemen have overlooked. Mr. Bannister has been discharged from the police service. Perhaps he anticipated that he would be and neglected to turn in the money. Answer, Mr. Gordon, and thank you. Yes, sir. The money has been located. We shall pick it up this evening. Who is it? All set. I stacked out men at every place we said the money was hidden. Good. Now, whichever place the gang raids, we'll know just who gave them that particular address. My man will call me here as soon as anything starts. How about I call the chief? Hello? That's funny. I can't get the chief's office. Hey, Chief, something's gone wrong. What do you mean, gone wrong? Well, Bill just had me on the phone and said to tell you to get that money out of your wall, Chief, and into the vault downstairs, quick. What money? Well, search me. He said you'd know. Why didn't he phone me? He said he was trying to, but your line was dead. He seemed awfully excited. Get that bag out of the closet. two officers on guard in the hall. Hey, you two. The chief wants you. Take that down and store it in the big safe. We'll take it, but not in the big safe. Keep your hands up. How did you get those uniforms? Ask the two cops when you get them out of the cleaning closet. I don't see why I can't get the chief. He said he'd be... Hello? He did? I'm sorry they didn't go into Frenchie's so I could fit it on the mare. Bye. A carload of men just passed your place three times. Now they're unloading at your corner. My place? I told Haskins the money was there. That makes him the gang spy. It looks like it. Better get going. Take the men from downstairs. I'll see if I can get the chief again. All right.
vengeance. Chapter 10 of Gangbusters at this theater next week. According to the papers, we have the payroll money. According to you, gentlemen, the police have recovered it. Why don't you let me tell Hanson that I have the money in my wall safe? Because I don't want anyone to know that but us, not even the mayor. But your job. It's not as important as busting this gang. But you're off the force. I know. But there's nothing to prevent a private citizen from trying to run this gang down, is there? No. There's nothing to keep the police from helping, if we feel like it. Of course. Hey, Bill. How'd this story get in the paper? Didn't we get the money from the pay car? Sure, it's in the chief's wall safe. Then what's the idea? Look, Tim, we know Professor Mortis has got a spy on us. Well, it looks like it. He always knows what we're going to do before we do it. We're going to use that money to catch the spy. I don't get it. We're going to tell everyone I've got it. But we're going to tell each and every one is hidden in a different place. Oh, I see. Then when the gang comes to get the doll, we know who tipped them off. That's it. Let's go. The money's in my apartment. I was going to use it to trap the gang, but mum's the word. Let them worry about it for a while. If you won't tell a soul, I got the money in my cellar. Now listen, keep it under your hat. But the money from the armored car has been located at... There's no answer, Mr. Gordon. And thank you. Yes, sir. The money has been located. We shall pick it up this evening. A lot of the men just passed your place three times. Now they're unloading at your corner. My place? Yeah. I told Haskins the money was there. That makes him the gang spy. Hey, Chief, something's gone wrong. What do you mean, gone wrong? Well, Bill just had me on the phone and said he'd tell you to get that money out of your wall, Chief, and into the vault downstairs, quick. What money? Well, search me. He said you'd know. Why didn't he phone me? He said he was trying to, but your line was dead. He seemed awfully excited. Get that bag out of the closet. Chief wants you. Take that down and store it in the big safe. We'll take it, but not the big safe. Keep your hands up. How did you get those uniforms? Ask the two cops when you get them out of the cleaning closet. Here. Well, you know Vicky. Always where she's not expected and least wanted. What do you mean, not wanted? Well, what happened? What about Tim? I don't know. All I know is your stakeout, Mr. Fire. Oh, no, I didn't. At least we know who's carrying information to Mortis. Who? Prepare yourself for a shock, Vicky. Your little helpmate, Mr. Haskins. Haskins? <laughs> that bump on the head didn't do you any good. I hope you're right, but nevertheless, we'll get him in the chief's office tomorrow morning and find out for sure. But listen, Haskins, the money's gone. And it was you who called the phony policeman in from the hall. Well, you told me to. Don't forget, you told the chief I called you on the phone when I didn't. Boy, I thought it was you. It sounded like your voice. Honest. Let's be fair about this, Bill. That could happen. Now, how come the gang showed up at the place we told Haskins the money was cashed? Well, they showed up at your place, too. Yeah, that's right. Well, Haskins, I guess you're just a victim of circumstances. I'm glad of it. You mean all is forgiven? All is forgiven. Gee, thanks, pal. Well, I guess I better go get a short uh, coffee or something. I'll see you later. 
No? Is anybody convinced? Sorry, but I'm not. Me neither. His alibis are too pat. I hate to doubt a boy like Haskins, but I think I ought to put a tail on him. Well, since I'm not on the force anymore, it wouldn't cost anything to let me do it. Good. Then it wouldn't have to go on the record in case we're wrong. I thought we'd agreed you were never to come here except when sent for. I had to. I'm in a jam. Look, I want to talk to you alone. Anything you have to say can be said in front of these men. Okay. We've got enough money stacked up so that we can split it, scatter, and live like kings. I believe so. But stacking up money is not my real purpose. I know all about that, but the cops are wise to me. They know that I've been tipping you off to their moves. And you're afraid. Well, why not? This guy Bannister's no dumbbell. And he's going to get us sooner or later, too, Doc. He might. But I intend to get him and the entire police department first. Hey, that's a big order, ain't it? My plans are all made. I warned them what to expect on my last broadcast. They ignored the warning, so they have no one to blame but themselves. These are detailed instructions for a man by the name of Soupy Collins. Do you know him? No. Soupy. Safe cracker, huh? A real Peterman? The best on his line. Get this to him at once through our Mr. Crump. I don't like carrying dope like this. Suppose the cops find it on me. They won't understand. It reads harmless. But Collins will understand. Okay. But I think it'd be smarter to scram. Hey, what did you mean you ain't interested in dope? What other reasons is there for a mob then? Revenge and power.
don't know, Tim. But when a bomb expert like Sidney Collins buys an alarm clock, something's going to happen. And I'm going to camp right here until he makes his next move. Bring a squad car around to 4th and Oak and stand by so we can trade him when he comes out wherever he goes. Okay. Makes a tick. You tell him. I'll hook it up while you guys load the stuff. Soupy drove the truck into the yard behind the old warehouse. I've got to get in there and see what's going on. Let's go. No, you stand right down at the corner. If Soupy comes out again, trail him. If I hear any trouble, I'll trail you. Right. Let's get going. I can hear that clock ticking from here. Yeah, I don't like it. Okay. Open the gate for me. Hold it. and blow the place up. That'll kill everybody in the building. Catch it and dump it in the river. Yeah, if there's time. and dump this load. We better leave, buddy. We ain't got more than a couple of minutes. Keep driving. Let's get out of here. There ain't but a few seconds left. There's the bridge just ahead. There ain't time. 
There better be. See Wanted at Headquarters, Chapter 11 of Gangbusters at this theater next week. sort of thing do you think the people will stand for before they get wise and do what you told them to? You mean get rid of the city officials? Yes, and the police department. They've already thrown Bannister off the police force. I'm going to do the rest of the job for them, my way. Within a few minutes, police headquarters will be blown up with everyone in it. What's in the truck? Dynamite. We're going to park it in the garage under headquarters and blow the place up. That'll kill everybody in the building. Catch it and dump it in the river. Yeah, if there's time. and dump this load. We better leave, buddy. We ain't got more than a couple of minutes. Keep driving. Let's get out of here. There ain't but a few seconds left. There's a bridge just ahead. There ain't time. There better be. You know about headquarters. I'll stay here. Well, we run into some trouble, boss. It, it didn't work. What went wrong, Mr. Elliot? <laughs> I wish I knew. Somehow Bannister got wise. Yeah. I wonder who spilled it. Do you recollect that the last time Mr. Hoskins was in here, he said he thought the police suspected him? That's it. The police spotted Collins through him. Undoubtedly. I'm afraid we'll have to send Mr. Hoskins away. You mean blast him? Not necessarily. We must not be allowed to come here anymore. One must agree with this. Yes? Bannister is here to see you. Good. Send him in. Congratulations, Bill. Thanks, Steve. That was a great piece of work, Bannister. Well, it's a start anyway. These are the kind of headlines we like to read. I suppose you're giving Bannister his badge and reinstating him? Got it right here for him. No, thanks, Chief. You're not quitting now, just when we got this gang on the run? No, I'm not quitting, but I don't want the badge just yet. I certainly don't well, see what... I've accomplished what... more since I've been off the force than I did when I was on it. So let's let it ride like that. All right, but it doesn't look good. How did you do it, Bill? By trailing Haskins. Then your plan worked. Fortunately. You see, Haskins was carrying information from here direct to Professor Mortis. Then he should be arrested at once. That would be another mistake. I don't understand. We'll skip that. The Chief does understand. I used Haskins once, and I intend to use him again. Yes, that's all right. What's your plan, Bill? Well, the reporters will be here for more news if they're not already here. Now, this is what we'll do. What's up? Another angle on the story, I guess. Paul, I know. I got a tip from my office to be here. Do you think it's true Bannister's back on the force? What's the new angle? Have you caught Mortis? What about Bannister? What I have for you is more important than news. Are you kidding? 
But first of all, I've got to ask you to keep a secret. A secret? No news? What good's a secret? I know that's asking a lot of reporters, but I have to take that chance. Well, how about it? Will you do it? How long do we have to keep this secret? Not long. And I promise to give you every break as soon as I crack this case. Okay. We'll play ball. Let's have it. All right, here it is. In a notebook among the effects of soupy columns, we found mention of a newsboy named Grubb. We believe that Grubb is the go-between for the League of Murdered Men. We want to get a hold of Grubb before the League gets wise and has a chance to silence him like they did Corky Watts. That's why we want it kept quiet. What is it you want us to do? Help me locate Grubb. With your connections, you can do it quicker than we can. As soon as you find out anything, report to me. That's all. Goodbye. Thank you. You got any hunches about this grub? Nope. Say, I think I'll check with the circulation department. Hi, Heston. Going on town, Al? Sure, hop in. All right, back here. Only going a few blocks. Okay. Thanks, Al. This is as far as I go. Extra, extra! Extra afternoon edition! Extra, extra, extra afternoon edition! Read the final level races! Extra! Grub hasn't left his station once. We ought to get some action pretty soon. Extra afternoon edition! Racing results! Extra! See anybody slipping that note? Must have got it from that bundle of papers. Smart trick. I'll fail. Why do you suppose Grubb ran into the subway? We can't figure it out. He wouldn't commit suicide just because he was being followed. Whatever it was, it didn't work out so good for him. Or for that matter, for us. Maybe he got excited and forgot about that train when I took a shot at that lock. He's one man that Mortis won't bring back to life anyway. Yeah? 
Brand will want you in the lab right away. Sounds important. I can't get much from this, Bill. There are no fingerprints, and it's written with an ordinary pencil. And what about the paper? Well, it's just from one of our scratch pads here at headquarters. Then Haskins wrote it here and got it to Grubb by that delivery truck. Grubb would have taken us to Mortis, but the train stopped him. Where's Haskins now? He was in the press room upstairs. He's our one real lead to the gang. If we could stampede him, he might lead us right to them. Get him in the chief's outer office in about five minutes. I'll see that no one else is there. And then what? Show him how to listen in on the chief's dictaphone. I'll show you a little news gathering trick. I found out the chief's a little absent minded about closing the key at his end. Well, you're taking a chance. What have we got to lose? The radio cars are all set with plain clothesmen in them. Whichever way Haskins goes, he'll be trailed. What do you mean, Bill? The clue we found on Grubb panned out. Then you were right. Yeah, if nothing goes wrong, the drag debt will locate the Mortis headquarters inside of an hour. Say, I'm gonna get busy. I'll say we have. No, 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 you, you cover things here. Uh-uh, I'm going with you. He's on his way. Oh, I uh, need something in here. You connected with the broadcaster? Direct. Sorry, Vicky. Janet Joe left you out tonight. Attention all special cars. Haskins has just left. When you pick him up, report. Car 66 has just picked him up, heading south on Market. 61 and 64 are paralleling on Broadway and Highland. Tell car 66 not to get too close. Car 66, don't let suspects see you. Stay back. Other cars will cover. Have car 64 move in now. Car 64, contact suspect car at Broadway and 8th. Car 66, as soon as 64 has made contact, you turn off. What in the name of... What happened? Don't ask me questions. Just get me out of here. Haskins has ditched his car. He's gone into the bus terminal. Instead of heading to Mortis, he's running away. Tell one of the boys in car 64 to check all ticket windows quick. I was dumb, Tim. I let him get away. Don't worry. The whole force is watching him. Get down to the radio room and listen in. man of his description just bought a ticket for Glen Falls. The bus for there has just left. Tim and I'll go after it. We'll take Highway 12. Wire ahead and have the police at Glen Falls pick him up on arrival. We can't afford to let him get away, Bill. Don't worry, Chief. We won't. Hey, Bill, Come I just said found... we're going for a long ride. We ought to make it to Glen Falls about the same time that bus does. Yeah, it looks like a highway patrolman flagging us down. Are you Bannister? Yeah. I just got a flash from your chief. He says Haskins left the bus at Truxton and boarded a westbound train. How far is that from here? 40 miles. Train left there 20 minutes ago. Anywhere we can head it off? They can take Highway 19 north. You might catch it at Emory. That's 70 miles. We'll try. Phone Chief O'Brien. Tell him to wire the conductor to delay the train if he can. OK. Haskins left the train at East Junction. Where's that? Next, turn to your left and east 10 miles. Thanks. 
I'd say he's 30 years old, about my build, his black hair and blue eyes. Yeah, yeah, he got off here. I noticed him because he was kind of nervous-like. Where'd he go? Down the track. Hopped the northbound freight just as she pulled away from the water tank. How long ago was that? Mm, uh, nine minutes and 30 seconds. Thanks very much. Thank I recollect exactly what time it was, because I said to the young guy... The Long Chance, Chapter 12 of Gangbusters, at this theater next week. I'd say he's 30 years old, about my build, his black hair and blue eyes. Yeah, yeah, he got off here. I noticed him because he was kind of nervous-like. Where'd he go? Down the track. Hopped the northbound freight just as she pulled away from the water tank. How long ago was that? Mm, uh... Nine minutes and 30 seconds. Thanks very much. Thank I recollect exactly what time it was, because I said to the young guy... Resisting arrest doesn't make you look very innocent. You can't arrest me, Bannister. They threw you off the force. You're not a cop. That's right, but Tim is. Here he comes now. Nice work, Bill. Come on, Haskins. Your troubles are just beginning. Is this story true? 
Bannister captures member of League of Murdered Men? Certainly it's true. I gave out the news myself. I don't see why you ever threw him off the force. He's the only man you had that ever got anything done. Well, you told me to, Your Honor. It was an order. Put him back on again. And that's another order. Bannister again, eh? All right, Mr. Bannister. We'll have Haskins out before the day's over. Hey, Professor, are you going to have him make out he commit suicide with them little white pills like I did? Certainly. And claim the body for burial and bring him back to life. Who can you send to make arrangements? The cops have seen all us guys since we had our pans altered. Take this to J.D. Malloy. He's an attorney who will act for us. Is he a friend of yours? Hardly. Tell him to memorize the instructions, then destroy them. What makes you think he'll do it? I'm counting on you and Mr. Taboni to persuade him. Mayor Hansen asked me to arrange this interview, Haskins. Persuade you to help us in rounding up the League of Murdered Men. What do you say? Not a chance. Why not? I'll use my influence as mayor to get you as light a sentence as possible. We don't make that sort of a bargain with criminals, Your Honor. I don't want it anyway. The League wouldn't rat on me, and I won't rat on them. Do you mean to tell me you're more afraid of the League than the law? Sure I am. You can't send me up for more than a few years. The League plays for keeps. Take him away. I just found this in Grubby's clothes, sewed in a coat lapel. Make anything of it, Bill? No. No one's in it? No, they just found it. How about me taking it to the lab for analysis? Go ahead. Mind if they strip Haskins to the skin to see if he's got a duplicate? What makes you think he has one of them? He's psychic, Your Honor. Sorry, gentlemen, but I can hardly afford to become embroiled in anything as questionable as this. You can't afford not to, brother. Memorize what's on that paper, then burn it. And follow the instructions. I don't like to refuse, gentlemen. You but... ain't gonna. We're not asking you, we're telling you. Chief O'Brien for me at police headquarters. Yes, sir. Uh, that capsule contained a combination of the strongest soporifics known to medicine. Soporifics? You mean a sleeping powder? One that induces a sleep so deep that might easily be taken for death. Could a patient be revived from such a sleep? Hmm, I think so, if given an antidote within a reasonable time. Why? Randall, I believe you've solved the riddle of those prison suicides that later turned up alive. You mean that's the League of Murdered Men? I don't get it. Well, they could have faked suicide by taking one of these capsules and then could have been brought out of their sleep by the friends who claimed their bodies for burial. Bill, I think you've hit it. We searched Haskins and found this in the flap of one of his pockets. Submit to the one we found on Grubb. Fill it with something harmless and put it back at his coat where you found it. What for? Because we don't want him to know we found it and we don't want any more suicides. Ernie Malloy just phoned and said two men tried to hire him to visit Haskins and tell him to commit suicide at 5 o'clock. Then be on hand to claim the body. So his friends could bring him back to life as they did to Boney. I suppose so. I was pretty sure they'd try that. More mind reading, I suppose. Sure. Phone Malloy, will you, Chief? And tell him to pretend to do what they ask. What, and let them take Haskins away in a dead wagon? Sure, and then trail him right to their headquarters. I get it. Is everybody crazy? Maybe I am, but I think I know who Professor Mortis is. Who? I'll tell you after I search the records on Clayton Maxton. Who's Clayton Maxton? Sounds like an automobile horn, but that can't be right. Will somebody please tell me what this is all about? Let me J.B. Malloy and fast. Well, I judge you convinced Mr. Malloy he should assist us. Sure. We'll pick up Haskins' body at five sharp. You know what worries me is, can we trust this guy, Malloy? Certainly not. By now, he's probably tipped off the police. 
tipped off the police. I hope so. We've got to make them believe they're outwitting us. Otherwise, they'll never let us have Haskins' body. Yeah, but they'll trail it to our headquarters. They'll trail the body, yes, but not to our headquarters. Now, this is what I want each one of you to do. I was right. Professor Mortars is really Dr. Clayton Maxton, one of the greatest scientists in the country. Of course. I remember him now. Unbalanced on the subject of suspended animation. Right. He killed a man experimenting with it. He called him an experiment. The law called it murder. And sent him to the chair. With the help of his lab assistant, he got one of those capsules and apparently committed suicide. He was taken away by this same assistant and brought back to life. Do you know who the assistant was? Haskins. Would you mind turning around while I phone some misinformation to the papers? I wish this thing was over. I've got a mighty creepy feeling inside. Oh, forget it. Nothing can go wrong. Says you, knowing you don't believe it. We don't want to arouse suspicion following in a taxi. There'll be a squad car trailing with us one block over. Driver, follow that car. Nolan calling car 18. Proceed west, about 20 miles an hour. I've got an awful guilty feeling about letting Bannister tackle this harebrained scheme. You ought to have, after getting me to fire him off the force. Well, I told you to reinstate him afterward, didn't I? But he wouldn't come back. Neither would I in his place. like a charm. By the time they find out they're following the wrong car, Happy will be in the clear. You better head along, just in case. What's that for? Just an added precaution. Bill's got a portable set with him. I still don't get it. Well, in case we lose the wagon, we pick up his beam and follow him that way. You know, like an airplane coming in on the fog. Oh. There it is. That's funny. The beam doesn't seem to come the car ahead. Back here and over to one side. This thing is all wrong. A beam isn't coming from the car ahead. Maybe Bill isn't in it. It's got to be. We haven't lost sight of him for a minute. It's the radio don't lie either. Yeah. Nolan calling car 18. Pull up and hold everything till you hear from me again. Hey, driver, get that car and run it over to the curb. Let's beat it. We're wasting our time. Wait a minute. Something's gone wrong. Wagons on us somehow. Bill's in the other one. Come on. Turn around, head back. Nolan calling car 18. 
Something's gone haywire. Double back. I'll keep you advised and step on it. Driver, turn north the next corner. Nolan calling car 18. Turn north on Grand and continue to further advise. Wagging up the road and ditch it. No one calling car 18. Stay on Grand. We're on the beam again. Well, Professor, I've been looking forward to this meeting for a long time. Hold everything, Copper. Your coming here enables me to do something I've been wanting to do for a long time, Mr. Bannister. you to sleep, a sleep that can't be told from death. And then I'm going to bring you back to life again. Come on, Copper, lie down. You asked for it. What's the sense in killing me if you're going to bring me back to life? To remain alive, you must repeat the treatment every few days. And to get the treatment, you must obey my orders, like all other members of my League of Murdered Men. and final chapter of Gangbusters. I don't get it, Bill. Haskins hasn't committed suicide. Well, of course not. But we want Professor Mortis to think he has. All right, I'll bite. Why do you want Professor Mortis to think Haskins committed suicide? He'll go after the body so we can bring it back to life, and I'll be the body. I got it. And we trail the wagon straight to the gang's headquarters. Right. And if they manage to give you the slip, at least I'll know where they're hiding. Just an added precaution. Bill's got a portable set with him. I still don't get it. Well, in case we lose the wagon, we pick up his beam and follow him that way. You know, like an airplane coming in on the fog. Step on it, you're being followed. Take this 
wagon up the road and ditch it. Honestly. Well, Professor, I've been looking forward to this meeting for a long time. Hold everything, copper. Your coming here enables me to do something I've been wanting to do for a long time, Mr. Bannister. Come on, Copper, lie down. You ask for it. What's the sense in killing me if you're going to bring me back to life? To remain alive, you must repeat the treatment every few days. And to get the treatment, you must obey my orders. Police are headed this way. We ran one car into the ditch, but there's more coming. Calm yourselves. I never look for him here. That's what you think. Oh, I see. Let him up. Professor. Hmm. Radio beam sending, sir. So you've kept them informed, eh, Ballister? It's a little late for that, isn't it, Professor? Very clever. Nevertheless, you won't get away. Take him to headquarters in your car. I'll go by a different route. Nolan, calling car 18. Nolan, calling car 1-8. Jules, we got to put this radio out of commission. Look, Tim, the car we were chasing. Driver, turn around, follow that car. Cut out the shooting. We've got the rest of the cops down on us like a swarm of bees. I'll lose them as soon as we hit town. We have to do better than this or we won't lose them. Shut up. took you so long. We lost a lot of time going up and down side streets trying to lose the police taxi. Where are Halliger and Bernard? Shaking off the cops. Good. If you'll prepare yourself, I think we can proceed with our operation without interruption. Better take your coat off. I don't suppose I have much choice. If you're determined to use me as a guinea pig. This is not an experiment. First, I shall suspend all appearance of life in you. Then, for reasons I have already explained, I shall bring you back to a life you may not find too satisfactory.
headquarters for a squad. There's a hundred places around here they could hide out. Looking for someone, copper? Come on, get in there. You too, sister. Enough time has elapsed for me to bring him back. The electrodes. The pull motor, please. I had hoped Helliger and Bernard would be here to welcome our new member to the League of Murdered Men. Pleasant one. Is he dead? Not without hope of recovery. You shall see. Pull motor, please. Chief O'Brien speaking. No sign of Vanister yet, eh? What's that? Vicky Logan and Tim have disappeared too. Well, then, find them. You have to tear down every shack in that district. What kind of a police department have I got, anyway? Pull motor off. Remove the electrodes. an experiment. The whole thing seems rather pointless to me. Not at all. You are now a full-fledged member of the League of Murdered Men. And I'm supposed to obey all your orders, I believe. Not only supposed to, Bannister. You have to. You've got a lot to learn about people, Professor. Perhaps. When you rest it up a bit, we have two more candidates for admittance to the League. How did you get here? Walk straight into a trap. And now that they know about this, of course, they must join the League. You don't mean that. Why not? I don't mind dying and coming back to life, if that's all there is to it. That's not quite all there is to it. To remain alive, you must take one of my capsules every few days. And you can get them only from me. Is that on the level? If it wasn't, do you think we'd be taking orders from him like a lot of sheep? Shall we say... Ladies first. I've got a suggestion I think will appeal to you, Professor. Really? I've no doubt that you've gathered enough money to last you and your men for the rest of your lives. He's got enough stairs somewhere out in the back to last a dozen guys like us. Money is not my real objective. I know. It's revenge. Revenge against two men in particular. Yes. Police Chief O'Brien and Mayor Hanson. If I get rid of those two for you, will you let my friends loose? You turn on men you've served so long? Why not? What do I owe them after the way they kicked me off the force? To get rid of them both, it might be worth disbanding and leaving the country. I think it's a swell idea. I'll settle for five Gs and a prescription for them stay alive tablets. Bring me proof you've done it, and I'll free your friends unharmed. Wait, Bill. You can't do a thing like that. Not to save my hide, anyway. Police lab, Randall speaking. Have you analyzed that formula of mortis? If a fellow took it and was brought back to life, would he have to keep on taking an antidote to stay alive? You pretty sure of that? I see. Thanks. 
O'Brien speaking. Who? Bannister? What happened to you? I'll tell you later. Will you get the mayor over to your office right away? It's a matter of life or death. And have some reporters there, too. I'll tell you when I see you. Bye. For the 40th time, I don't know what's on Bannister's mind. You'll have to wait till he... What's up, Bannister? Any more dope in the League of Murdered Men? What about that guy, Mortis? Now, hold everything. You'll know all about it after I've had a talk with the chief. What's this all about? Where are Tim and Vicky? Forget about them. I just came from Professor Mortis' hideout. Good. I'll send a couple of squads there. Where is it? I can't tell you. He just forced me to join his League of Murdered Men. What does that mean? Every member has to obey his orders. There's no escaping. Nonsense. Get to the point. The point is, he sent me here to kill you two. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yes, isn't it? Get back. You'll find out what they want you to know when they want you to know it. I don't like this sort of fooling, Bannister. Neither do I. Put that gun away. I'm sorry, but there's no other way out. There's a story your papers can play up. Get over there. just went crazy and killed the mayor and chief of police. So all because they canned him off the force. Bannister kills mayor and chief of police. Disgruntled detective lieutenant avengers discharge from post. You can't give out false news like that to papers. It's a misdemeanor. I didn't give out any such story. Did you? Not a word. Reporters are always jumping at conclusions. Maybe we ought to demand a retraction. Well, don't worry. You'll get it. And just wait till you see it. Whatever you do, don't correct that story for a couple of hours. Why not? It'll probably mean the lives of three people if you do. Vicki Logan, Bannister, and Tim Nolan. Looks like he did what he said he was going to do, doesn't it? Yes, but I've changed my mind about breaking up the League. You don't have to. Hold it where you are, all of you. Very foolish, Bannister. You don't dare shoot me. Why not? Have you forgotten about those capsules? No. Our chemist analyzed your formula and found out you lied about them. What do you mean? He just told you you needed them so you'd be afraid to run out on him, and you believed it. it could Take it easy, Taboni. You're all under arrest. Why not? Face them all. Jim, see if the squad cars have arrived yet. locking that door. Oh, that's all right. See, I'll carry the money for you, Professor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tavoni. No use, Professor. I want my share of that dough.
Mortars must have gone out that way. is finished, Vicky. There's no one left to bring him back this time. Since I was the one who had O'Brien kick you off the force, I'm asking him to give you back your badge. Will you take it, Bill? Thank you, sir. Detective Captain. You should read Gangbuster Number One. Well, that's the way it goes. Demoted one day and promoted the next. You know, Bill, I wanted to make you chief, but I suddenly remembered that was me. <laughs> Hold it, gentlemen. Hello, back already. This is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show, and that was the last parts of Gangbusters from 1942. Now, you can also go to Don's Breakfast Cereal Show, or Donald O'Malley, in YouTube, and hit like and subscribe, and you'll never miss one of my shows. So thanks again for tuning in. Hope to see you next time. Be kind of you. Good night.